Hey, I just finished this amazing table and I cannot wait to show you all the extras that I have on this thing. First, there's a cove cut underneath. Perfect. Second, there's two leaf extensions on the end, but they were cut by single boards going the full length of the table when they were as a single piece. Third, look at these beautiful legs. Come on in, I can't wait to show you how I built it. Check it out. Hey, I've got this beautiful black walnut that I'm gonna rip on the table saw for the tabletop and the base. Check it out. Boo! This saw stop table saw is absolutely a workhorse. It's the professional grade cabinet saw, not the industrial grade, because that's gotta roll on some three phase. I've only got one phase here in my studio, but this thing works perfect. Ripping the boards, it's a little sloppy, even with that Harvey on the side. It's not because of the Harvey in the background, but it's because of the dust collection ducks, and I need to upgrade those. Hey, it's time to take these boards, use the Festool Domino to get them level, glue them up for the table legs. Check it out. Boom. Now you notice that when I align the boards, that one's really, really light. That's just a feature of walnut. And I try to align them so that they look great. Sometimes you can't avoid it. And I don't have a giant stockpile in the background, so I'm limited on the boards I can choose. I do do the best. I think it looked beautiful at the end. Make sure you take a look at the end of the, of the video to see what it looks like. And you be the judge. Let me know. Did you like the way I laid them out with that really light board on the side? Take a look at it. Give me some feedback. I think there's kind of an age-old woodworking saying that says you can never use enough clamps. Totally agree. Sometimes um, I feel like I don't have enough clamps. I feel like I need double the amount. But where would I store them? I've got like 50 clamps of all different sizes. Yeah, I do what I can with the limitations I have here in my studio. Here's one of the things that changed as I developed as a woodworker. I actually started building my pieces using a Craig's jig and pocket holes and screws. And I was slow to adopt using some more conventional jointry. I was nervous it would take too long. I was nervous it would be too hard to do. And now I've got this large studio. I've got all these clamps. It ended up not taking all that long when I made the switch. It gives a much better table in the end. Top and bottom are sealed nicely with glue. The integrity is significantly higher. Those dominoes allow me to level the boards really, really well. Prior to domino, I used a nice biscuit cutter, um, the classic DeWalt biscuit cutter. That worked out really well. I ended up moving to the domino because I can do some more advanced jointry work and why have both tools on hand if I don't need it. So I made the template for the legs and now I'm just going to give them a little trace and then cut, rough cut them on the jigsaw, finish them up with a flush term router bit. This is a pretty cool process. You see that I've got that Festool battery operated jigsaw. I went with the battery operated one because I actually had the corded one and I was just totally annoyed plugging in the cord and managing it. So I go with the battery powered one. I got enough batteries to, to get through a nice solid cut here. I could use a bandsaw to cut this off, but my bandsaw is just not big enough. Maybe I'll get one of those fancy Harvey ones pretty soon. I got my eye on that. That double-sided woodworking tape is super strong stuff, but I want to be extra, extra careful so that the template does not slip on the workpiece when I'm template routing here. And the router is extraordinarily powerful, always a two-hand operation. I've got that big, big clear faceplate on it. That just allows me to keep it at a nice straight 90 degree angle with the one face. Again. More of the double-sided tape coming in absolutely clutch here. This time I'm using it not so that I can hold it while I use the router to flush trim it, 
butt so I can get the two ends of these legs squared up nice and tight. I used that added template. It's kind of just a platform that I'm clamping together with some double-sided tape to make sure the top and bottom of these legs run parallel and perpendicular with where I'm going to secure the stretcher for them. That's the stretcher that goes underneath the table for the trestle base. Hey, it's time to take the legs, finish shaping them on the sander, and get them ready for glue up. Check it out. Boop. Even though I use the flush trim router bit, I've always got to shape it one last time here on the belt disc sander. Pretty good at this. I do have a spindle sander, but I actually like the larger drum that comes at the end of the belt sander for most applications that I have. There's some parts of sanding that are just nauseating and take forever. This is one of those that doesn't. Not only does it not take forever, but it's quite enjoyable to see that belt go through it. Hey, it's time to take this beautiful black walnut, cut it with the Festool Domino, glue it up, and get it ready for sanding. Check it out. Woo! You're probably asking, what am I doing right now? I already glued up the panel. Well, I've got a second panel to glue up. This one is for the top and the two extensions that show up on the ends of the table. I made this top plus the extensions from single boards so that when you install them, you can see the grain lines going all throughout the whole table. It's a touch of custom work, not available on most box stores or if you work with large furniture making companies. I'm just a guy in the studio having fun building some stuff. And I can make these adjustments right pretty regularly for my customers. It's easy to do that in a small batch format. It would be impossible to do that if I was making hundreds and hundreds of tables a year. Again, we've got a clamp situation. I'm using about like 16 clamps here at $80 a piece, $70 a piece all in. And I've heard that some makers actually glue up two boards at a time. Wait until it dries enough where you can pull the clamps, then glue up two boards into four boards, then make four into eight, and so on and so forth, and just pay really close attention to the scene. I prefer to use the dominoes. I know it's more costly, but it's a lot quicker. It allows me to clamp all the boards at the same time as long as I get those dominoes lined up. You'll notice I use that, um, that's actually a nail punch, um, a very long nail punch. Allows me to get the dominoes nice and lined up with the mallet, use the clamps to finish the job. Hey, the big panel is glued up. It's time to chop it down to its full length and then sand it and then chop it one more time to get the extensions off the ends. Check it out. Boop. And we've got the Festool track saw breaking that out, breaking down this nice fully glued up panel. One of the tricks to slicing off leaves or slicing cuts in the center is you gotta place those down those in the right spot so that you don't cut through one of the mortises and expose an open area in the middle of the wood. Measured that well, did it well. Breaking out the RO sander here, the rough sand it, I almost always start at 40 grit. I do not have a giant wide belt sander, so I've got to do this by hand. But that 40 grit and the RO really rips through it. After I do that, I fill some of the voids um, with some quick cure epoxy. Inevitably, I have some voids in almost every table. I like the knots, I like keeping the knots, and I like filling the knots. I think it gives an added custom touch to the table. Again, something that a large manufacturer, a long, large dealer would not be able to do because they just can't do it right. They don't have the patience for it. They're focused on volume, not on quality. This quick cure, it says it is a five minute setup. It does set in five minutes, and I could sand it in five minutes, but it's still kind of soft. 
especially with the heat that the sander creates. So I usually wait a couple of hours before I sand this off. After I sand it off with the RO, I go right to the ETS at 60 grit. Usually wear gloves for this, not because my hands are going to get scraped up, simply because it helps with the vibration on my hands and my arms. Hey, I've got these beautiful modern legs that I'm going to put on an angle and make it a trestle so there is no apron to this table, but there's still extensions. Check it out. I'm actually standing in my wife's parking spot on the other side of the studio where I take the pictures. That's why that audio quality isn't so great. Sorry about that. Back in the regular part of the studio here though. Chopping up these boards for the trestle base. I'm going to take those legs I spent a lot of time on. And now I'm going to cut some walnut for the trestle base. These have to get cut perfectly sized. You're going to see some miter joints. Um, as I glue up and fit them with some more dominoes, that type of thing. I have heard a lot of people complain about the Festool miter saw here, the Capex. I personally love it. I know it's a little underpowered and the blade is a little smaller than say the Bosch miter sliding miter saw or the DeWalt sliding miter saw. But the thing I love about it is I can actually tone down the motor strength. I can dial it down to like one or two speed and I can cut really small pieces and safely. Here's that miter cut that I was talking to you about with some dominoes that allows me to get this nice feature on the trestle base. And I know with those dominoes, when they're glued in, the tight domino setting, it's going to be extraordinarily strong. The thing about this tool is that I can repeat jobs, I can repeat cuts very, very quickly and accurately with the tool. That's why I love it makes the job so much faster. This is the Domino XL. It's actually easier to use on the arm and the hand and the wrist than the, the smaller Domino. It only goes down to the eight millimeter tenons, uh, so it works perfectly for most pieces. I also have a small one that works too. Hey, if you paid close attention, you'll notice that I already introed the fact that I'm gonna cut the ends of this table out. Um, that was earlier in the video. I ended up saving it here because I thought it was interesting. Full disclosure, I actually made a mistake with the video. Put it in the wrong spot. Well, there you go. It's kind of permanent now. Anyways, I'm using the router here to give a nice round over to the edges of the table base. Give it a nice smooth look. Clean, gentle on the bottom. Um, easy on the knees, easy on the legs when you slide them underneath the trestle. In my earlier videos, you're not going to see a whole lot of router work unless it's on a router sled. That happens to be because my dad, who is also a maker, um, would always be nervous about using a router. He told me that they're one of the most dangerous tools. I've never actually had a problem with one, provided I secure the bit in tightly. Um, so I use it now. A little bit more confident these days with it. Some final cuts here, some final layouts on the trestle. I'm going to take the domino one last time and use this clamping table that I have to secure it as I cut with the domino to make sure it's nice and lined up and the workpiece doesn't slip. I'm going to put it together here with a whole bunch of clamps. The whole table's coming together. It's going to look great.
full-on clamping situations like this is not easy. I don't necessarily recommend trying to do it all at once like I've done um, in the past. In this one, I decided to cut that first piece together. And you notice this block I am using? That block is actually there so that I don't split the first joint here, that first 45 degree joint where those two leg sections come together. Now I'm clamp clamping the center of the trestle right here. I'm gonna clamp the legs in just a second. You're gonna And it's all together. I ended up clamping the legs in just two at a time because that's all I felt like I could handle without going crazy and doing some real funky work with the clamps. So putting two of them on, putting a whole bunch of dominoes in the end, nice and secure, nice and stable, nice and strong. I get my weightlifting in in the studio where I'm lifting these tables, twisting them around overhead. The second round of legs are getting installed right now. I was really nervous as I was putting this together that it wouldn't be nice and square and sturdy. Uh, that little bit uh, a time to be cautious, but you'll see at the end it comes out perfect. Now this bit, these are the top plates to the base. This is how I secure the base to the tabletop. If you remember the beginning of the video, I showcased the cove on the bottom of the tabletop. We've got a cove on these. I've got a cove on these top plates. I put it on the top plates too to kind of connect it with the bottom of the tabletop. It all works together as a single seamless piece. Yet again, another thing that a small studio can do that a large one can't do just because of time and volume and all sorts of stuff. Lining them up here, gotta be really careful to mark all of them. Label the table base legs if you're ever doing this yourself. There's been plenty of times where I just didn't label them and I forgot where they end up going. Use the Forstner bit to help me countersink bolts that I'm going to put on these top plates to get them into the tabletop. Now this is hilarious. I'm pretty sure there's a better way to do this. I just kind of glue it, line it up, screw it in, get it done. I'm sure there's some clamping I could have done to make sure this was nice and stable and didn't slip, but these pilot holes worked out great. My boy Walter in the background, he's hilarious. Good pup. What's funny is take a look at all these drills with different drill bits that I had set up for this process so it went nice and smooth. It's like one, two, three, four drill bits at a time, um, four drills, just cranking it out. I set them all up on the, on the work table so it just goes quick. Time for the base to meet the top, always an exciting moment. Um, does it line up? Does it look great? How well does it line up? 
gonna take these pilot holes, you'll see me cut a small hole underneath. That shows me where to cut with a Forstner bit much larger for these threaded inserts I'm gonna drop in here. They allow me to secure the base with bolts. I do that for this and you're gonna see I use those same threaded inserts to hold on the extensions of this table. Use a little flag technique with tape. Um, I measure the distance on the drill bit that I need, tape, put tape on it as a flag that shows me how deep I need to drill. This part of the project does take a while, but it's an added touch of integrity from the base to the top. Hey, I'm about to take the cove bit and cut up the side of the table. Check it out. If you notice as I started with this router on this giant cove bit I was doing, I got my power stance, nice broad base with my feet um, so that this thing doesn't go out of control. Oftentimes I'll use an apron just to add a layer of protection in case the thing kicks on me. But I was pretty confident with this one. I ended up taking two cuts on all of these, um, a shallow cut and a much, a much deeper cut. This code cut, as you see on the final parts of this video, really does make the table. You know, it trims it out absolutely perfectly. That final touch, those final touches that make this thing extremely elegant. Also, I'm taking, a little, I'm taking a little round over to the top of the table. Again, keeping along with the theme of nice, clean cuts on this tabletop. Hey, it's time to take these rails and these T-bolts, put them into the bottom of this table and install the extensions. Check it out. Boom. These extension rails aren't that special except for their nice clean C-channel. This is the same C-channel that I'll put underneath giant slab tables to keep them straight and true. I just decided let's use these as the extension rails this way, they can have the highest level of integrity when you put the extensions on, but I don't have to almost permanently install rails on this tabletop because if I did that, when it's in its normal form, it would totally take away of the clean line. So I ended up putting these rails in and they work out really, really well. Um, I use thumb knobs on the top of bolts that you'll see me install in just a second after I get these rails installed, so stick around. More threaded inserts. These threaded inserts, I actually prefer to use the ones that get held in with screws. I had once used a set that were just straight threaded inserts, typical furniture pieces. 
um, the integrity of them. I, w I didn't trust them. I felt nervous after I was all done with the table. So I looked and I searched and I scoured for something that would work. These are the ones that I end up work using for each and every one of these situations. There ain't nothing special about these bolts. They're simply bolts with knobs on the ends so I can hand tighten them. Um, correct size bolts. Found them on Amazon. Here's my guy Nathan sanding it up the base. Giving it nice final touches to it. Really getting in there into the crevices. Using about like 16 different kinds of sanders to get this job done. Um, you can never have enough sanders. I'm pretty sure about that. I feel like I need another like 5 or 20 more. Hey, I've got the tabletop, base, and extensions all ready to get cleaned up using that plunger can and mineral spirits. Check it out. Uh, do yourself a favor and get one of these plunger cans. Those plunger cans actually give the perfect amount of material onto the rag to wipe it off. Not too much, not too little. Gets the job done each time. This is the first time I get to see the color of the wood, the actual true color of the wood when it's all oiled up and finished. And I can't say more about how great this is. It's absolutely beautiful, perfect coloring. Getting in there, these joints were nice and tight and perfect. Nathan helping me out in the background as always. Hey, it's time to seal the base and the tabletop with rustic lumber finished furniture oil. Check it out. You know, to say that name of that company correct for me takes like six takes of the video. Anyways, I use these syringes to measure it out nice and perfectly. Easier to get the correct amount, easier so I don't spill all over the lip of the can as I'm doing it. Definitely with the accelerator gets the correct amount, correct five to one ratio with this product. Takes about 200 milliliters for this whole table. Just that amount, which isn't very much, but it gets the job done. This sealing process is a bit labor intensive and a bit physical on the hands to get it into all the work grain. But as a single coat finish, it is extremely amazing, extremely durable. I am a major fan of it. Use it on all the products that I possibly can. Now this flooding method is a little bit controversial to use in terms of getting the product onto the piece. I use it, it's extremely efficient, gets the job done, and I think I'm careful enough with it putting the material, laying it down in the right spots um, where I don't get any of that gray out, that weeping of the material back up through the wood um, at the end. And I uh, haven't had any complaints, haven't had any problems with it. So, um, and this just does the trick, gets the correct amount on there. And remember, when you see the final pictures and images of this table, you're gonna see the grain going all the way through the extensions and the tabletop. I was extremely pleased with it, extremely proud of the results. This table is drop dead gorgeous and just about perfect. I can never say tables are perfect, because I made them, and I know that there's always little things that I would always improve on beat components, but um, when I say something's next to perfect, that is the highest praise I can have for anything that we end up building here. So we've got the final pictures here of this beautiful table. If you made it this far, please like, enable notifications, subscribe, Patreon my page, all that good stuff. Hey, it's time for me to show you how to install these extensions onto the bottom of this beautiful table. Check it out.
These extensions take about five minutes to install on each table. You gotta get the bolts lined up really well. Uh, I find it easiest to get them lined up by looking underneath the table. The good thing is when you're working with extensions on tables, you don't have to use, you don't use them every day. They don't come on, come off, come on, come off. And the best part about putting them on the ends of the tables is that you don't have a permanent seam on the table in its normal working form. So we end up putting them on the ends. We have a temporary seam just when you have a large gathering and it works out perfectly. These just screw them in nice and tight. There's an intentional gap left between the main table and the extension. It's an intentional gap because the wood's gonna move, it's gonna fluctuate. So I embrace that by opening it up just a little bit here. But it's really, really tight. It's like a 16th of an inch. It's super, super close. Just that easy. And here we go with the final review of the final table. Take a look with it in all its beauty. Also, please subscribe to my channel. Please. Peace.